<laughs> Alright, when we hit last... Spoiler less... alert, jeez! Oh, that's right, Noble hasn't seen it. He didn't know Archibald died. Oh, no. <laughs> Noble Archibald doesn't die. Archibald lives a long, happy life. Oh, thank God. Little do you know, he will soon be the deceased of the party. <laughs> Archibald, do you think that enemy did or did not get the point? Anyway. I think that enemy got the points. <laughs> I just want to cancel the session and watch Pro ZD for the next few hours. I'll do that later. Uh, Seeker was just about to die. Was that yeah. yeah. So no, that's what I remember. Opening up the treasure box before allowing the artificer to check it for traps. I only make smart decisions. Okay. There are three objects inside the treasure box. The first two objects on the left and right hand side of the box, in fact, pushed all the way up against the velvet uh, inlay on the walls of the box, are two more icosahedrons. The same uh, basic size and shape as the first one, but instead of feeling an attractive magnetic force, you feel a repelling magnetic force, like the metal on you is being pushed out and away from these two objects. Okay. In the center of the box, and I hope this does not trigger your PTSD, is a beautiful clockwork doll. Oh, jeez. Laying there with her eyes closed, and she has coils of uh, red wire giving her the look of curly hair. And she's wearing this gorgeous black and purple uh silk dress very frilly and she has little shoes and little pieces of jewelry does she have a spot that th does it look like the right size that i might use the key i have to wind it uh you wouldn't know without picking her up and yeah i'm picking over. it up picking up the doll she was sitting on a small envelope that uh looks like folded stationery folded over and then sealed with wax. All right, I'll pick up the envelope. You pick up the envelope. Open it up. You break the wax seal, and inside, written in a gorgeous looping script, it says, my name is, and then a long blank underline. All right, well, I'm not giving this one to Lucius. Because he, he had his chance. Mm-hmm. I think about it for for a moment. And I take out a quill and I write down precious. You write down precious. The same thing happens as before. The ink dries into the parchment. How are you holding the doll? Uh I'll uh I'll put the doll down for a moment onto the stool while I write the name in. What stool? I thought it was sitting on a little stool. No, it was just laid inside the box. What the heck did I hear? I don't know. Oh, jeez. Well, anyways, I'll just uh, then I'm I'm just kind of like holding it by like the uh, the waist. Okay. And the thing's eyes open up, and you're clutching this thing around the waist, and you hear it say in a small voice, it says. A gentleman would buy a lady dinner first, at least. You're my favorite. <laughs> and <laughs> there's not a lot of articulation to her face, but she flutters her eyelashes and her little arm raises up and waves in your direction and says, no, you're my favorite. All right, fantastic. I hold out my arm like I'm like I'm stooping a falcon. And I put it on there, and I just say, okay, two of you, we're solving puzzles. You're going to need to grab each of these, like, repellent balls, use them to catch one of those uh, things. Someone else will grab the other one. Meanwhile, I'm going to hang out with this doll for a bit. I hate everything about what is happening right now. Why Why would you do this to us, Brooke Road? Connor just looks at the doll. And I, I look at Connor, and I say, this doll has absolutely no fey influence, and you stay away. You don't know that! The doll introduces itself to Seeker as Precious and asks for Seeker's name. I'm the Seeker in the dark. 
She says, my goodness, I do believe that is the most absurd name I have ever heard. And as she looks up at the rest of you, and you see she gazes at Connor and Gus. Says, and I see you travel with the unwashed and the miscreants. Gus. I've been I've been trying to elevate their society. I'm going to throw that doll in that pit. And then she so, looks over <laughs> at Lucius and says, Oh, but aren't you sweet? And she holds both of her arms out with palms up and gives you a come hither motion with her hands. Connor, so like because like I guess I'm the miscreant and you're unwashed. Does it matter? Yeah, a little bit. Lucius, okay. what's your response? Lucius, Lucius approaches with some trepidation. And the doll reaches up her arms, like giving you a motion to pick her up. And Lucius does. And she says, such a relief. It's difficult being so close to the floor. I'd insult Precious's name, but her name is perfect. And as long as you're holding Precious, I mean, she's giving these kind... She's offering her opinion and little quips about absolutely everything. Lucius is not happy with this, but he tries to put a, put a brave face on. How are you holding the doll? As... Uh, kind of cradling it on my... Cradling her between the arm and forearm of my offhand. Okay. She nestles in. And gets comfortable. What's next? Alright. As discreetly as Connor possibly can, he is going to burn a spell slot so he can use primeval awareness. Okay. Which does what? Uh, I can detect any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead within a mile. I don't know quantity or even location. Or, uh, sorry, up to six miles. Sorry, no, one mile. I don't know quantity or location, just that they exist. There are definitely some of those creatures within a mile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're that yeah. is, technically that still is in the middle the of the gunfoss. Does it say up to a mile, or...? Within one mile of you. Okay. Because I'm just wondering, like, <laughs> can you, like, narrow the search a little bit? I mean, bit probably and... all of the above, because you're still in the middle of Dunfoss. So... Uh, or blue, blue worm, worm. blue worm. That's correct. I'm sorry. Something like that seems absurdly unhelpful. Is and this why gets... Connor's always terrified? <laughs> and when Connor gets hits, <laughs> when Connor gets hits on the on the action, he just looks at the doll and shakes his head. All right. So she's good, I guess. All right, well, we still got puzzle solving to do, so who's going to help me out with this uh, this magnet here? And she claps her hands together and says, I know all the puzzles. They're so easy. All right, well, the, don't solve uh, them for us. It's rude. Does the reverse magnet look like it might fit inside Eldov's missing compartment for a voice speaker? No, it's actually the size and the shape of the previous uh, okay. icosahedron. There's just two okay. of them instead of one. Right, we're... And Seeker kind of just like impatiently says, no, no, no. We've got the puzzle solved, guys. Come on. Yeah. We do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll grab yeah, one of the icosahedrons. All right. I think you might need my help with that in a second, Gus, but... Can and I we even... can start making our way back. Can I even grab one of the icosahedrons wearing gauntlets? You can. I mean, you can feel the repellent force of it, but it's no more difficult than grabbing... You know, a large magnet and pressing it against something. I'm just going to stick the other one to Scrappy for now. Okay. I color, right. I color the doll pink. So, let's, uh, let's put Eldov... As you enter this room here, Precious asks, Did you solve the puzzle honestly, or did you get the missiles? We got the missiles. I wish I had been awake. I love the missiles. Seeker, go ahead. Personally not a fan. Alright, let's let, put uh Please let me put... throw the dolls under the missiles. <laughs> What's let's down put in the Alex come with? Uh, 
other police come with. Do you mind if I move? Um, yeah, go for it. Let's move Scrappy onto this one. Okay. Yep. Let's let the skeleton be on this one. Where's the skeleton? Next to you, uh, Lucius. Put the skeleton on that this one because it's pretty uh pretty nearby. And then Gus, you and me work together. We're gonna try to trap the last um one of these uh clock hands and keep it focused on this one. Okay. So you're using Eldov on the first one, you're using the attractive icosahedron on the second, and the two repelling icosahedrons to trap the third one. Is that correct? Yeah. And in turn, as Eldov moves into the position, the first door opens. As Scrappy moves into position, the first door closes and the second door opens. And as... Who's got the third one? Gus? Uh... Gus. Me and Gus. Yeah. Gus, as you guys move into position, the second door closes and the third door opens up into this chamber. Is that another sundial? Looking in the room, you do see another sundial. Don't forget that if you get trapped in there, that you have good berries and cannibalism is not the correct choice. Why would I forget that I have good berries? Uh, I'm going to inspect this for traps before I turn it. The third one seems... The, the double hit seems a little suspicious. Okay. And it looks identical to the sundial in the previous chamber that you were playing with. Okay, that's a... Uh, uh, that's a 12 on investigation. So, alright, let's get started turning. Okay. Left or right? Right to start. And once again, it goes about three full turns and then comes to a stop. And you can't turn it any further than that. I think we need to get somebody in the middle room. Or both of them? Yeah, I think we're going to have to turn both of them. At least. Alright, I'm going to hold this one all the way to the right. Okay. Someone should uh, move Scrappy, go in there, and turn that one all the way to the right. And if nothing happens, turn it all the way to the left. Alright, so move Scrappy off of the thing. Yeah. And when that happens, Alex gets closed into this room, and the second room opens back up. All right, I'll hand uh, I'll hand Gus the other side of this so that he can keep them both trapped. Okay. And uh, Seeker, head into there and start turning this. Entering yep. this room, this door is open. Huh. All right. Well, I'm gonna try to turn this clockwise first. Okay. And as you turn it clockwise, it goes about three rotations and then stops. You can't turn it any further. Alex, a few moments after the door here closes, this one opens and jerks and halts. And it goes down this short hallway and ends in another gear chamber. I have any... Is there anything on here I could use to brace this uh, sundial so it can't move? Could I, like, use some wire to wrap something around the pedestal, like tie a rope around it so it can't turn back? I'll say with a successful Tinker Tools test, you could rig something up. That's a... Is it dexterity or intelligence? Yeah, I'll use either one. Uh, 25. Okay. Yeah, no problem. You use it at your tinker's tools, and after a few moments, you get it set up so the sundial is locked in place. I'll actually light up a coin and take a look in here. Looking in here, the gear is turning fairly rapidly, clockwise. And looking down, you see the black smoke uh, that you were... Uh, recognized from earlier, but looking up, you see about 15 feet overhead a second gear in the same shaft, rotating the same direction even more rapidly, and then maybe 15 or so feet over that a third gear turning more rapidly still. So this first one down here has the fewest teeth and is moving the slowest, although it's still the fastest you've seen so far. The second level has far more teeth moving the same direction at an advanced speed. And then the third one has more teeth still and is moving even faster. Okay. I'm going to take it here and release the thing, but I'm going to leave it on the pedestal so in the future I can easily hold it in place. Okay. So, I'm, I'm sorry, you're... Moving the sundial back? Yeah, I'm letting it drift back. Okay, and then the door... Let the mechanism ratchet back. Uh... Seeker. Mm -hmm. You see this door come to a close.
Is the okay. door to this chamber open or closed right now? The one I'm in is closed, right? Because Scrappy's not on his thing. This all all the doors in your chamber are closed. Yep. I'm sorry, no, this one is open. Oh. This okay. is closed. This is closed. So it's Seeker's door is open. Seeker's is open, Alex's is closed. Try turning it the other way, Seeker. No, we know what happens if you turn it the other way. It opens this. I mean, I'll give it a shot anyway, because what's the worst that can happen? I'll do it. Try turning it the other way. He keeps saying that. And Alex, I from your position, <laughs> this door ratchets closed, but then opens again after just a moment. Yeah, and I say it probably just does the same thing. That's what happened when Alex did it the other way. Okay. Uh, let's get Alex out and tell him. Lucius. Yes. Doors opening and closing and things moving around. Sitting there, cradled in your arm. Precious looks up and says, Do you need a hint? Give us a little more time, I would say. And she rolls her eyes. Says, Very well. I call it to Scrappy to move back onto the uh, platform. Okay, he does so. Are you gonna and so that there? should open up this one. That opens up Alex's door and closes yours. Okay, so, uh, Lucius, I think this is all you. There is a vertical chamber, if we open all of these, that has increasingly quickly spinning gears, but I think you could fly up through the center. Okay. I've got a um, mechanism in here that will hold the door to it open. Okay. Uh, I'll tell him how to engage the mechanism once he turns, it's just going to be really simple. And I'll, I'll yeah. make sure once I'll make sure Seeker's on board with what we're doing. I need to open up that door in order to get him in here. Excuse me. Well, no, someone's gonna have to be in that chamber, or I'm gonna have to rig up another sundial holder. But uh, you might be able to get inside there and rig up another one like that. Yeah. Because we have no real reason to go up in there anymore, I don't think. Sure. So I'll move Scrappy off of this. I'll see Alex standing there. I'll explain to you, Seeker, the same thing, and then I'll try and build another one of those on this. Okay. Go ahead and make that roll. The Tinker's Tools of... 32. 32? Yep. Okay. You ratchet the sundial and it stays in place. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I don't we like the all go of through it, but I don't know how we get back out here. <clears throat> I think hmm, we need another two. We need another to hold the. Uh, Alex, did you leave this one ratcheted or not? Uh, unratcheted. Okay, that's what I thought. But the, basically, I built a device that it will lock it into place after you ratchet it. All right, and I'll step out of here. Okay. In order to, because uh, the idea the idea is we're gonna want to get all of us through the uh, through this passageway. I mean, I think and, we could uh, do that. It's just we'd have to leave this room in the state it's gonna be in, which would be fine because the door to that area will be open. The problem well, is we have one person that's holding the holding this thing in place. Yeah. I stick the attractive one to the gear itself. Okay. It's, is it metal? Does that work? It is metal, and it sits in place, and the hand also stays there. And when that happens, Lucius, Precious, sitting on your shoulder, claps her hands. Brilliant. Gustavus, can you place the? Uh, can you put? Can you manipulate the hand so that it rests in between the two? Uh repelling ones that's a much sure. bigger ask because if you place the repellent icosahedron down on the metal gear it's going to probably roll away erratically right right right, right. well let's uh let's take a piece of paper here and sketch this out so what do we need we need this open we need either a way to get through here or a way to get through both of these and we have yep. yet to see both of these open or at the same time. all four of these yeah 
or go through this path. Mm, yeah. We can keep... Okay, so it's very easy to keep one of them open. Yeah. Yeah. Which means getting into this room. We could ask Elda of the Skeleton to manipulate this for us. We can also ask Elda of the Skeleton to let us in this room. Right, exactly. Because he could stay on this gear. So let's do this. Let's see if we can't identify what... Like, what... So we know this one operates this and this. Yeah. So let's... Let's use colors, maybe? <laughs> What's funny is your guys' labels are going to be very different from my labels. So let's hope I don't get gonna, confused. I'm just going to, like... I'm just going to use red. Okay. I was just going to, like, do letters, but yeah, that works. Well, it's a red letter, so... Yeah. <laughs> and then we know this one right here does what? Uh, that one opens... Well, the only one we're sh we know for sure is it opens this door. It sounds then that we need someone in there while we uh, investigate these other rooms. All right, so somebody needs to go in here. Go in I'll back in there. The cannibalism yeah. room. <laughs> okay, so who's so staying we'll have to on manipulate the scrap, uh, We'll have to manipulate um, Eldov and. Gus off so that we can have um, just the yeah. Echoes and Heatron. Okay. I don't mind staying on here with uh, Scrappy so that we can kind of. So you have one loop. sigil depressed and the red winch turned right now. Is that correct? Yes. And this has been rigged up so it doesn't winch back, yes? Right. Okay. It's a there's a little thing that they can flip over to hold it in place or let it re release. So entering this room with one sigil depressed and the, only the red winch rotated, both of these doors remain closed. All right. I think these two doors opened when this door was opened. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think so too. So it's probably in addition to this we have so we have two winches and three things. So we need to find the combination of basically five that gets that gets us through here. Well, let's uh let's use numbers for these. So this is one door open opens up this. Uh-huh. Lucius one, precious one leans in. Says, "Are you sure they can count?" Please let me throw her in the pit. Please let me throw her in the pit. Under no circumstances. Present this with a combinatorial matrix. <laughs> yeah. Three gets us this. Two gets us this. Uh, what else did one get us? Well, we don't know, because we're not in those other rooms at the moment. I think we should have somebody in every room, and then we'll, like, just go through the permutations of it. <laughs> No, I mean, that makes sense. And then, like, we can kind of just be like, okay, after a minute, we will, like, basically... Yeah. Reassemble. Yeah, and then that way, uh, and we'll, we'll do it. We'll just cycle through once to see what changes in each one of the rooms. And then right. we'll cycle back around to let everybody out, and then we'll discuss what we found. Okay, go ahead and place oh, yourself in the idea. configuration you'd like to be in for your first check here. Blue winch on or off? I think we should do. Oh, uh, uh, well, let's get everybody inside the room. So we go through with the sigils. Yeah, let's start with through. everything off. Have we tried closing the all three sigils and turning the winches? That's another state we should actually consider a state zero for the machine. Yeah, we'll we'll do that too as well. So what we'll do is we'll cycle through. Uh... So you're going to yeah, cycle okay. the sigils to send Seeker into this room, Lucius into this room, and Alex into this room. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. What, yeah. About, what about the far room? We can get you in the far room in a moment if you're with me in here. All right. Yeah. All okay. right. So first thing, I, yeah, first thing I think we should do is actually let all the doors close and cycle the winches. Okay. okay. So we're going to move everything where there's no. Uh, does Precious want to stay out? Stay out here, or does she want to go with you? Precious is riding around with Lucius. She has not. Okay. 
given any indication that she wants something else. Okay, so we're gonna like move everybody away from the sigils. No sigils, it's just free spinning. Alright, so both winches off and no sigils. That all of the doors you can see are currently closed. Okay, we're going to do So Lucius uh, will turn his winch. Okay. Yep. When Lucius turns his winch, Alex, the door here opens up. So that's uh that's zero uh A and B naught. Oh, operates God. that door. As long as it makes sense to you, man. What's next? Okay, we're going to do... Then I'm what? going to turn my winch as well. Okay. Uh, Alexander, when you turn your winch, Lucius, this door opens up. And then we're going to let Lucius's winch release with mine turned. Yep, okay. Okay, so Lucius is off and Alex is on? Yep. And when that happens... Alex, when Lucius turns his winch off, this door closes. And Lu as long as Lucius's uh, winch remains on... Wait, I think I've confused myself. <laughs> Lucius on, Alex off. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, then this door is open and this door is not. I have to translate red and blue into the symbols on my map, so it's going through <laughs> two layers of abstraction here. Heavily <laughs> indirect addressing. Sure. That was English. Okay. So All right. So now uh let's let's set it so that there's one symbol on. So but this, so this one is currently turned. Do, are well, these doors we'll... open? No, wait. This door is not open. Right now, none of the doors to the main chamber are open because all the sigils are off. Okay, I'm going to open uh, one. You're going to do one? Just okay. open one door to let them? And that opens open the door them. into Seeker and Connor's room. Okay. Well, let and... me make sure we got this. So this one opened with uh, zero and A, correct? And B was not turned. Yeah, I think you're making this too complicated, though. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it has any... I think I, I think everything controls one thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and see, these two doors opened when we had two uh, sigils depressed. So let's this do two sigils. Open. Yeah, so we'll do two sigils. And when you activate a second sigil, this door closes. This door opens. Huh? Both of these doors open. And this door if... opens. Yeah. And since the red winch is turned, this door is open as well. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so let's send Connor in there to watch this door. Okay. Okay. All right, All right. now three. Three, yep. So door number two into Lucius's room closes. These two doors close. This door closes. The door to Alex's chamber opens. Lucius, you see this door open. And Gus, you yep. see this door open. Oh, we, we didn't see that door open previously? Huh, interesting. Oh, we have the we have this turned. Okay. Gotcha. All right. What's next? All right. Now that we've tested everything, um. Try with both red and blue on. Okay. All right, Alex. We need to figure out how to open this door. Turning your winch on? Yeah. When you do that, this door opens and this door opens in oh. Connor's room. So this is, I'm marking it purple. So oh, well, no, because we didn't have anyone in there before. 
L Lucius, turn your thing off. Swing mine off. Okay, and the red doors that you have labeled close. The one in Alex's room and the one in Connor's room. Okay, great. Okay, so that is just a blue door. All right. All right, I think we have everything then. Do we have that? This door did Do not open at any point. Do we need it? Like, we don't seem to. Don't really think we need it for... I think okay. we, uh... Wait, but did this door open at any point? Yeah, when there was two doors, when it was on two, right? Oh, okay. Correct. Yep, yep, there's a two on it. So we put, so that's how we do it is we, we, we have three, what we can do, put, uh, put Eldov in position. We have this here and then, uh, that lets, uh, we can just walk in and that, this. yeah, that just lets Gustavus and C and, uh, and Scrappy in with me. Yeah. As long as we have two things and we have Eldov here, we can just make this path. Yep. Exactly. Walk Dore into position. The uh, lover into position. Okay. So let's get us back out of here. Connor, you come with me. And uh, if you can set it back to one, we'll come out and then we'll join you, Lucius. And after a few moments of finagling, you managed to get everybody back out into the main chamber. All right, Eldov, I think you're going to have to stay here for. Stay here, buddy. And he looks up, and you can see he has no musculature articulation on his face but you can tell that he's sad do you want us to come back for you and he nods all right well just i'll write that down i'll write a big piece of paper come back for eldov <laughs> show it to him once we Listen. find your voice buddy hopefully you'll be able to tell us something Listen and to when me very close you say to that story. uh he moves his hand away from the plate and points at the doll Lucius is carrying. And she gasps and says, Don't look at me. Don't let me anywhere near that dreadful thing. Nope. That's a great idea. Best idea the skeleton has had yet. Precious, did you steal our good friend Eldon's voice? She says, of course I didn't. That would be abhorrent. Do you share a voice? Make an insight check. On the doll. You want me to make an insight check on the doll? Wait, I wish I wasn't locked into this chamber. <laughs> that's like a... That's not great. Okay. Uh, that's like seven... We should absolutely remove the voice from the doll and put in the skeleton. She tells you that's preposterous, and also she implores Lucius to run you a bath. Okay, and I'm gonna run over and I'm gonna grab the doll. <laughs> that's it. And she no. shrieks and she I... kicks violently, but ineffectually. I'm gonna just take her. Over. Please be. I'm not like Stop. being. I'm not damaging the doll. It's a doll. Yeah. And she starts crying out and calling Gustavus all sorts of names and insists that she's being kidnapped and implores Lucius to come and rescue her. I'm just a ne'er do well, remember? And then I'm going to like uh, hand the doll over to Eldov. And I mean, Eldov, when he reaches out to take. The doll has to move his hand away from the plate, causing the last door to close. That's fine. <laughs> and he reaches out and holds the doll kind of in front of him with his bony hands wrapped around her waist. And she's just pounding on its chest and kicking at him. And he kind of looks up blankly as though he doesn't know what all to right. do. Let's get our artificer out here. Let's open up all three, all three things. Yeah. Boy, the right, last Alex. one took a while. Did we have a lot of combinations I didn't realize? Find another lever? lever? Alex, we need you to remove the voice from this doll and give it to the skeleton for a bit. Oh, yeah, sure. And she cries out, Alex, no, you would never do such a thing. 
All right, so uh, I'm gonna just look her over, kind of pop her mouth open if that's possible, and look for something that looks like that voice and box. She tries to chop down on your fingers as you do this, but I'm wearing heavy gloves. Sure. And yeah, deep inside the cavity inside of her neck, there's some sort of device locked into place there. Can I make a tinkerer's tools check to remove that? You sure can. All right. I'll look be even worse than this than the doll. This is exactly what I thought would happen. <laughs> uh oh. So, so, no, it's actually still real sadly. good. Uh, that's uh, eight, fifteen. Think so he says this one happened back when you were my favorite. <laughs> it was what a twenty. A twenty on Tinker's tools. Yeah. Okay. After gonna, a few moments, you get the uh, tools move in. Move them both over here so I don't have to deal with these gears moving as I do it. Uh, that's probably <laughs> for the best. Yeah, you manage to dislodge the small device. It's just this little clockwork. It looks almost like a marble, but there's two thin strands of wire coming off the back of it. And if you hold it up to a light, uh, inside the marble you see like impossibly tiny gears and sprockets moving in conjunction with one another. And as you remove it from Precious's mouth, she clasps her hands over her neck and opens her mouth ineffectually. And, and again, we her... totally can't just install this on Scrappy, right? Uh, he doesn't have the hardware. Yeah. Well, I was asking the groove before I start putting I would elbow, take some I notes better... of that voice box is what I would do, Mr. Artificer. <laughs> Can I do uh, another check to install it into Eldov? Uh, no check is required. Okay. The check was to get it out without damaging it. You managed to do that. Yep. Now that you've actually taken it out, you know how it goes together. And you reach into Eldev's jawbone and you plug it into place. And on him, it's just hanging in the back of his throat. Whenever he opens or closes his mouth, you can see it just kind of dangling there. And once it's plugged in, it glows green for a moment and then dims again. And Eldev stares around blankly. And then Eldev, I presume? And it says, in a very, uh, very dry-sounding and musty voice, it says, My name is Eldov. Uh, <laughs> yes. What? What happened to the doll? Where's the doll? Is it still animated? Tell me it's dead. Alex still has it. Oh, it's still animated, and it's very sad. Like, it doesn't have any articulation or musculature on its face, but she's clutching at her I throat. Can't. And she's... I'll hand it back to Lucius. Wait, oh, Eld... Eldov, you got anything to tell us? Lucius, she reaches up and grabs hold of your... Uh, the clasp of your cloak and buries her head in your chest. And her shoulders heave as though she's sobbing. I'll let her do this. As... I just... I don't... I, I'm... I realize I've lost control of my life. This is exactly what I thought would happen. And Seeker, you asked Eldov something? Yeah, I said, Eldov, do you have anything to tell us? And he reaches up and holds his chin for a second and scratches the top of his head as though thinking. And then it says, I am very hungry. Aw, oh, gee. What do you eat? I do not know. Did somebody take Florian's corpse and turn it into a mechanical skeleton? I'll give him a ball bearing. And it takes it in its finger and he pops it into its mouth and it immediately falls through his jawbone, down through its <laughs> empty ribcage, clatters on the floor. And he puts his hand to his chest and rubs his belly and says, That was delicious. This Hi. is so much cooler than the doll. I'm starting to feel like better. Precious made better use of the voice it's box. Cooler. What? No. Precious, I might be crazy, but on this one. <laughs> What's next? To get these other, to bring Eldov with us through the, through the, through the chambers. Is there any way to get these repulsive magnets to stay in place? As soon as you well, set them down on the metal, they would roll away. Doesn't seem like there's a way yeah. to secure them. Do you have any, uh... Do we just... Uh, 
so here's my thinking. Mm -hmm. Is you said you had some magnets? I have a couple of small barg magnets, yeah. Can we use those magnets to keep these magnets in place? I'll try. You have wire. I don't think you'd be strong enough. Yeah, I have wire and rope. No, the magnets okay, in your tinker's tools are not strong enough to hold. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex, though, now that you're doing this, make an, uh, make an intelligence check again. Yeah. It's uh, 21. Playing with your magnets and your tinker's tools with these repellent icosahedrons, the problem is your magnets have a north and a south pole. The magnetic field is aligned in a particular way. Uh, and so one side attracts metal and the other side repels it. The icosahedrons... One of them is purely attractive, and one of and the other two are purely repellent. They don't have particular poles. Oh, these are monopoles. This solves so many problems in the universe. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's make a... How much... Do you have enough wire to make just like a cradle? Like, you, all you have to do, right, is make a... They're going to roll away. I mean, so they'll repel you... the wire, but what about rope? Yeah, that that works. Can I try tying them between the piece of a gear? Like No, you just what you do is you just make a, a circle and you set it like a like a holder, like it's on a like I don't know the correct term. Coil. Scott. Coil of rope. Yeah, like you just make like a like a You're saying we coil it up and we keep it on there like it's on a um coaster. Yes, exactly, a coaster. That's exactly what I'm going for. Yeah, no, that's that. what I'm thinking too. I think that should work. I mean, I'll try it. Uh, you take two lengths of rope, you coil them up, and the ball rolls around in the coil, but after a few moments of adjusting it, you do manage to get them to stay put. And you couldn't swear it would stay there forever, but you're pretty sure it'll stay there long enough to move through these doors. Sounds good to me, and this means we get to bring our buddy Eldov with us. Eldov says, I am your buddy. Eldov, you seemed a lot more articulate back when you couldn't speak. <laughs> Everyone is crazy but me. Cannot believe anyone wants to give that dollar voice back. So you're activating two sigils and both winches? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and that opens the path through this room and this room and this room. And so you're looking up through a... Uh, a clockwork shaft. It looks as though there's three levels, about 15 feet apart. Looking down, you see the same inky cloud as before. This bottom layer has the fewest teeth. It's rotating clockwise, and it's rotating faster than any of the gears you've seen before. 15 feet above you is a second gear here. I know it, the, the map makes this kind of confusing looking, but it's above. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know why he didn't use arrows or something. He used like these little oblivion gate symbols for some reason. It's mysterious. It's mysterious. Oh, it was made by this guy Blando, uh, by the way. So that's Blando, nice. yeah, I saw that. So the second yeah, tier yeah. has more teeth than the first tier and is moving faster. And then 15 feet above that is a third gear with more teeth than the second and moving faster still. So, do, so Alexander, you say that you want me to fly up there and see what I can see? I mean, I'm not going to climb. down a rope for us. That yeah, I, I mean, I think just find out what we're dealing with. He, okay, I'm going to cast fly on myself. Okay. And uh, there's no central shaft to this, right? The, the cogs are turning all the 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 teeth where these cogs are turning are on the outside right correct it looks like they're just kind of suspended in air one above the other about 15 feet apart all right just burn yourself so actually i can hit one other person with fly so gustavus you just volunteered touch you and you can fly as well let's go buddy uh okay up I go. Who goes up first? I'll go up first. Lucius. Hey. 
you fly up the central shaft. The hole in the middle of the second gear is narrower than the uh, one in the first. In fact, it's narrow enough that you kind of have to be very careful aiming yourself upwards so you don't bang your shoulder or your knee or whatever. And I would like to get a dexterity saving throw from you. Sure. Checking a feature here real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, does a oh um yeah you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add a d10 to that with my uh, class feature dark ones on luck. Okay. I don't think a nine is gonna pass. Probably not. Let's turn that nine into a seventeen. Okay. As you ascend the center, you feel some sort of membrane as you pass through this hole going upward as though you've broken the plane of something and then from all directions in the central shaft you hear the sound of like wire dragging across metal and before it's too late you kind of roll out of the way across the side of the gear And you watch as these wires constrict all around the central shaft. And then they relax and move back to the walls. Whew. Shut down to Gustavus. Be careful coming up through there. That that could have taken my head off. Uh. Okay. Gus is going to uh, fly up slowly. He's flying too. But he's going to stick the torch. He's going to hold the torch up, and then he's going to try and bust the membrane. Okay. And then go through when it's resetting. Okay, give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh. What happened to Lu- to Where's have... Lucius after you shot that warning down to Gus? Uh, Lucius is going to press himself down up against uh, as low as to the, uh, to the gear as he can. Okay, and it's kind of unnerving because this gear is moving faster than the one below. So as you lay prone on it, I mean, you can feel the centripetal force. Uh, is your head inside or outside? Uh, as you're laying down. Inward. Okay. So yeah, you feel the outward motion as your feet are being pulled towards the wall. And the cog high above you is moving faster still. Gus, how'd you, how'd you roll? I'm going to indomitable. Okay. And I rolled the same exact number. Beautiful. Ah, that's the Gatrix special right there. Three. Gus. Uh-huh. Turns out Gus is dominable too. Eight points of slashing damage, and you are grappled and restrained. As these wires, as you're thinking, I'll go up while they're resetting, because they could not possibly constrict again as they're resetting. And then that exact thing happens. The wires whoop back inwards and wrap all around you. And the place where they intersect your flesh, they cut into you like a piano wire might. And they hold you fast there. And you get the feeling, you can already feel the pain of where it's grabbing hold of you. Uh, Even through my armor? Because I well, am wearing plate mail. Right, but you're not wearing plate mail over your face and your fingers. and. But you realize I... the more that you struggle here the more tightly you're going to be bound. So you can attempt to escape the grapple, but doing so will incur further damage from the slashing wires. And Lucius, you're laying there, and these wires, now that they're reaching out from the wall, kind of form this uh, dangerous-looking crisscross pattern above you, Mm -hmm. making the path impassable. Gus, what's wrong? Gus is screaming, Ah! Lucius, what did you do with Precious? Lucius is holding her close to him as as he's laying prone on this thing. You still have her, though. Yeah. So, Gus, I mean, looking down, you're being held suspended in the air just above the plane here, but swooping around you, laying on the gear, is Lucius and Precious, and you see Precious is glaring up at you, and she sticks her tongue out at you. Um, this is a this is a 
situation we're in. Uh... What level vertically is Gus trapped right now? Second. Middle level. Okay. Gus, you were, Gus. you were carrying up a rope to let us up, right? Just drop the rope and we'll send Alex up there. He's got wire cutters. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll just, like, let some rope down. Okay. And t can I... Do I have enough, uh... Like, can I... Do I have enough, like, personal movement? I don't know how, like, to, to, to just kind of, like, wrap the rope around my arm to brace it so they can basically climb up using me. I'll say any sort of movement in this motion, like, you're gonna... It's gonna take some... Well, you already had the rope at the ready, did you not? Yeah. So you're just kind of lowering it to them. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's probably fine. As long as you, can, you have a good hold on it. Just tie the rope to the gear. Tie it to one of the to the teeth so I don't have to pull, you know, slice Gus's arm apart if I put weight does, on him. Does the gear look like it's going to, like, it, does, do the teeth on it pass through it in such a way that it's going to cause the rope to be cut? It would probably be impossible to climb this rope if it was tied to the gear because the rope would be moving around the perimeter of the gear very quickly. Yeah, you'd be spinning. So anybody grabbing yeah. the rope would just be battered against the wall. Just give me most of your equipment. Go up there with some wire cutters. You're light. You don't weigh more than Gus, and he's already hanging from the thing. I mean, most of my equipment at this point is in the bag of the holding, thanks to the magnets, so I'll start climbing up the rope. Okay. And Gus, I mean, you feel all of the wires holding you shudder as Alex breaches the plane, but nothing further happens. So I'll lay on my back here, and I'll reach up with my thieves' tools and try and start freeing Gus from this trap. Make an intelligence check. Yep. Intel you, can, you can make this intelligence tinker's tools, if you like. Great. Uh, so that is plus 18 tinkers. I think I know what it is, but I determined that Seeker wouldn't. <laughs> 19. 19? So laying on your back, getting out your little bolt, your little wire cutters. This is very distracting. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to simulate the uh, action. I didn't say stop. Uh, the wires that are holding <laughs> Gus coming out from the walls of the shaft are under a fair amount of tension. And if you uh -huh. snip one, it's possible it will whip out and slash at one of the other people in, people in the chamber. So each one you cut, there is a potential that that's going to happen. How many wires are there? Dozens. Uh, by the chamber, do you mean the gear that I'm on now or including the lower chamber? Probably just the gear that you're on now. Great. Uh, Lucius, why don't you get out of here? Pull myself down through the... Uh down through the through the hole and just kind of hover like right right here watching upward okay all right let's let me think here for a second um what i would like to do is i would like to find the point where i can cut through the most wires at once so i can do as few cuts as possible okay but you're gonna start cutting wires yeah, once I can get, like, a whole bunch of them together, just slice them all in one action. All right. <laughs> Roll me some percentile, please. Yep. This is how Gus dies. Decapitated. Oh, Gus has tons of HP. This is how Alex dies. Lucius. <laughs> yes. As you come back down to the bottom. Eldov the skeleton looks over at you and says, 